news right out of the state of Washington, where state Senator Marilyn Chase has introduced a bill that would require the labeling of genetically engineered foods sold in that state. Now, she says, quote, people have the right to know what they're eating. Can you imagine that? Now, this bill states that by July 2014, all genetically engineered raw foods must be clearly labeled with the words genetically engineered and processed foods must include a label that states that the product may contain genetically engineered ingredients and it must name those ingredients on the label. Now you may recall that there's already a ballot initiative measure underway in California that hopes to put a bill on the ballot that would require the mandatory la labeling of genetically engineered ingredients in California. Combine that with Washington and then you only have Oregon left out of the scene. You can have the entire West Coast a new realm of mandatory GMO labeling that could set a precedent to spread to the rest of the states. Now, moving on, more breaking news. Ron Paul receives a game-changing game endorsement from a South Carolina senator. This is a big deal. The state, or I'm sorry, the U.S. Senator, or I'm sorry, State Senator Tom Davis from South Carolina is considered a, a heavyweight, a very inf influential individual in that state. And he says there's, this is his quote, there's only one person, only one person speaking to what I believe is the core problem of our country today. The biggest threat to our liberty comes from debt. There is only one candidate that is talking about this problem to the degree, at the scale, and with the scope that it needs to be talked about. You can't nibble around the edges anymore. And we now have a short video clip of State Senator Tom Davis explaining more. We need drastic, radical return to the principles this country was founded upon. And if you look at Dr. Paul, and if you look at the lonely battle that he's fought up there in Washington, D.C., and if you look at the courage that he has shown, and if you look at the withstanding and the pressure that I know he's under, because I feel it in Columbia, I feel it in Columbia all the time. Corporations are out there with their lobbyists, and they want handouts, they want subsidies, they want loopholes, they want grants, they want special treatment, they want crony capitalism, and it is rotting out of the public very cool. Davis has officially and publicly endorsed Ron Paul for president. That's a very powerful endorsement. We now have a, a short video clip from Jesse Benton, who's talking about how Ron Paul is now surging in the polls. We're surging in South Carolina. We've got the resources, we've got the grassroots, and most importantly, we've got the winning message. People in South Carolina are looking for a candidate that will really cut the spending, be serious about this debt that we've got exploding and uh, and really really go to the white house to, to to cut the spending and get this government under control they know dr paul's got the credibility and dr paul will do what he says we're surging in south carolina we've got the, the good news is that over 1.3 million dollars has already been raised in south carolina for ron paul's election a lot more of that coming no doubt with future money bombs now moving on to additional news that still involves ron paul however Look at the outreach of the, the outrageous, overreaching, tyrannical actions of the EPA. I mean, this, this is an agency that's completely out of control. The U.S. Supreme Court has now heard the opening arguments of a case known as Sackett versus the EPA. And Ron Paul calls it an outrageous overreach of the EPA. And in his address, he talked about it. He says, unless Congress acts, EPA bureaucrats will continue to inflict potentially devastating economic consequences on communities like Matagorda County and people like the Sacketts. Destroying the economy is no way to save the environment. A thriving economy and a fair judicial system that respects property rights and the Constitution provides the best protection of the environment. We also have a video clip of Ron Paul's address that covers this very issue. Let's go to that. Last week, the Supreme Court heard arguments in Sackett versus EPA, a case of blatant federal agency overreach and abuse of private property rights. 
Without any proof or reason and no chance for appeal, the EPA determined that a small, single home lot was a protected wetland. The owners, Mike and Chantel Sackett, were ordered to haul construction already underway to remove all the work already done and plant trees and shrubs consistent with a wetlands environment. After making these costly changes, the Sacketts then would have to wait several years for the EPA to decide if they would be allowed the use of their own property. Refusal to comply with these outrageous and arbitrary commandments would result in daily fines greater than the value of the property. Outraged, the Sacketts sought relief through the courts, but court after court determined that they had no standing. The actions of the EPA were not subject to judicial review until a mountain of fees had already been assessed. This is just another example not only of how federal agencies wield enormous power over the average citizens, but also how little practical protection our courts provide when such citizens are harmed by those agencies. Constitutionally, when the government determines private property is needed for public use, it is taken through eminent domain. In that process, the owner is due fair market value in compensation for their condemned property. The EPA not only refuses to compensate the Sacketts for effectively taking their land, they are assessing or threatening to assess ruinous penalties that greatly exceed the value of the land. They arrogantly claim the power to determine how certain property owners can use their land while assessing fees or ordering actions that must be undertaken at the property's owner's expense. All of this is done at the administrative level with no judicial oversight. In short, the EPA does not believe the Constitution applies to them. One of the, the key statements from Ron Paul there that you just heard is that this has been done at the administrative level with no judicial oversight. This is the rise of tyranny that attorney Jonathan Emord warned us about in his book by that name, The Rise of Tyranny. He warned that all of these agencies, the EPA, the FTC, the DEA, the FDA, DHS, of course, they have all become their own tyrannical kingdoms, not subject to legal review, not subject to any of the courts. They simply invent their own law, they implement it in any way they want, and they have become little fiefdom tyrannies in America. And that's what we're seeing now waged against the, uh, the innocent landowners in this case. I mean, think about it. They just bought a lot. They want to build on it. And now they have to go through all this crazy hoop jumping by the EPA and they still can't build on it. And it could cost them more than the lot is worth just to pay the fines to the EPA. I'm so glad Ron Paul helps bring some common sense to the forefront on that issue.